51. Now, the private detective drama Strike is back on BBC One this weekend. It's based on the books written by Robert Galbraith, also known as J.K. Rowling. In a moment, we're going to speak live to Tom on the sofa, Tom Burke, who plays the lead role of Cormoran Strike. But first, let's see him in action along with his assistant, Robin. What sign are you? No idea. Oh, come on. Everyone knows the star sign. Don't pretend you're above it. Sagittarius, Scorpio rising, sun in the first house. No, I only know that because my mum was crazy about that. Mm -hmm. What the hell does sun in the first house mean? It doesn't mean anything. Look at this, though. The killer is Capricorn. Capricorn kills Julie W. It definitely looks like he had a suspect in mind. A horned goat deity. Try getting one of those to court. You can be insane and right at the same time. Mm. Sounds like something you'd read on a fridge magnet. I just don't think we can discount all of Talbot's theories just because he got ill. But if you look at his notes, he clearly thinks it's a single person killing women in North London. To be fair, most people do think Dennis Creed killed Margot. Yeah, but there's no proof. This is someone with an obsession. It's not good police work. That's what you need on a cold, dark night, isn't it? A sort of yeah. gritty crime. Tom Burke is here, Cormoran Strike. Good morning. Good morning. Resuming this role, mm. do you love him? Do you love playing him? Very much, um, particularly because of my love for the books, which I think all murder mysteries are about death <laughs> in one way or another. And detectives are inherently uh, gothically inclined. But what the books do so tenderly and expertly is, is place these two individuals who are so share this mutual curiosity of, about crime and the darker side of human nature. But simultaneously to that, they are helping each other unravel. Um, they've both been through various traumas deep trauma by anybody's standards and um, have their own demons and they they somehow inspire each other to to reach for a, a very different sort of life than the life they've already known mm. and that curiosity is irresistible for strike isn't it that the scene opens with you on holiday visiting families getting away from it all you're approached by a stranger and you cannot say no to a new case yes and i think all i, I think all the great detectives of literature are much more there are much more people who are sort of fascinated by by evil than... I mean, and not to say they're not morally indignant about it as well, but I think probably the ratio is more towards this kind of obsession and curiosity about what where that's coming from and what drives that. That's interesting. This is the latest series, but, but your first cold case. It's the first cold case, yes, which which means that there's a lot a lot of flashbacks, a lot happening way before, a lot of casting to be done to... to balance two very different periods of somebody's life, which was all done very expertly, I think. Yeah, and so you're balancing then and now, mm. and, and your character then and now as well. Also, yes, um, there's a whole plot to do with Strike's uh, aunt, Joan, who's very ill, and so we see a bit of his childhood um, through that. So uh, the whole thing, in a way, is there is a theme of, of parents and mothers and fathers and... And the trauma that you went through as a little boy, you get yeah. more of an insight into that. Whose clever idea was it in a commissioning meeting to say, I tell you what, we've done a lot of the back streets of London, let's head to Cornwall? It feels strange <laughs> to only be going there now because it's such a huge part of him and such a huge part of the book. So it was very nice to finally touch base with that bit of it. What about beautiful. you and your life? Because your mum is in this with you, starring. Yeah. yeah. What yes. was that like? Uh, it was great. It was very good fun. And... Uh, I was actually uh, inevitably on, on, a, on a shoot so long one, one hits the, the lurgy wall at some point and she happened, one of her scenes happened to coincide with the day that I was at my most ill so it was nice to have a little extra bit of sympathy that one might not get just, you know, from a... Oh, she's looking, I thought you were going to say she told you to put yourself no, no, together no. and... Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> It's always nice to have your mum, though, when you're feeling a bit poorly, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Um, lots of people will be tuning in to see how your relationship develops with Robin. It's yes. kind of this ongoing side part of the storyline yes. that people are really engrossed by. It's written so... Um, so subtle, So it? subtly in the books. And uh, one friend of mine said something like, uh, oh, you just... Oh, it's just the same scene again and again and again. And I said, it's not never the same and I feel a sense of failure if anybody says that because I think it's charted so incrementally in the books but um 
I, I like to think he hadn't watched them in order or he hadn't seen them. <laughs> he's just or, wrong. Or he just watched them, wasn't, wasn't watching them carefully. Enough. Maybe he's just watching the same thing again and again. Yeah, maybe. Um, the book's <laughs> written by Robert Galbraith, who, of course, is Harry Potter's J.K. Yes. Rowling. Did, does, does she get involved in the making of the drama? Do you, do you speak to her? Do you get briefings? Uh, yeah, she, well, not always, but, but certainly on certain occasions where she feels it's absolutely uh, a necessity. Um, for the last book... There were a lot of scenes with with Strike and Charlotte, his ex, and she wanted to give me a backstory, which is there in the books to a degree. But but she wanted to give me even more of a backstory because I think when you're reading about that relationship, you often think, well, hang on, how are these two people together? And and she she wanted to give me some context to that to kind of sustain well me and Natasha to sustain us, sustain us through the next few books. Charlotte isn't in this one, but she will be. Maybe she's telling you a little bit about what will emerge in future mm. future books. One can read between the lines. Yeah. And work things out, Literally, yeah. 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 Um, before we go, you've been filming in the in Australia, haven't you? Yes. The latest Mad Max. How was that? It was great fun. Was it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was with Anya Taylor-Joy, who's a fantastic actress and a wonderful person. And um, uh, all my scenes were with her, really. And uh, it, was, it was just great fun, yeah. And was it mad? It was pretty mad. It was pretty mad. There was a scene where we were we were dr driving a car without a windscreen on, with clouds of dust coming through, just squarely hitting us in the face. And it happened to be a moment where we were supposedly at our most happy, joyous, and free. And um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was quite a lot of acting to do. <laughs> I was about to say you've chosen some wonderful locations, Cornwall and Australia, but that sounds quite brutal. Uh, it was uh, a little brutal, but on, on, on the whole, it was just great. Yeah. Where do we see it, Mad Max? Probably not for at least two years, maybe really? longer. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a, so lot a lot of, of production goes into order. those films, isn't it? Well, it's lovely to have you here this Thank morning. You. Thank you very much indeed. Tom Burke and uh, Strike premieres at nine o'clock this Sunday on BBC One. Yeah, we uh, we morning, watched we? the first episode, didn't we, last night? It's we brilliant. Um, do stay with us. Headlines are coming up.